The question of us being alone in the universe has fascinated mankind for centuries. The idea we could be the only intelligent species to exist seems to become less plausible the more we learn. A theory proposed by physicist Enrico Fermi puts a number value to the possibility of life in the universe. The Fermi hypothesis takes the number of galaxies, the stars in those galaxies and the potential number of planets which may support life and gives us a calculation that shows we are indeed not alone in the universe. However, this is when we hit the Fermi paradox. If there is so much life out there, why are we not inundated with alien species on this planet? For the sake of keeping this video to a reasonable length, let's leave UFO sightings and other evidence to one side. In this video, I would like to take a look at another interesting theory. That theory is the zoo hypothesis. Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell and never miss a video again. The idea that our planet is some kind of game reserve or zoo was first established by John Ball, a radio astronomer in 1973. He raised the question that if there is an abundance of intelligent life in the galaxy, what reasons would they have to ignore us or maybe worse, quarantine our planet and species? Maybe ETs view the planet as a wild uncivilized place which is more interesting to observe than become part of. As advanced as we consider ourselves, are we in fact as interesting to aliens as a lion is to a tourist on safari in deepest Africa? This raises an interesting idea that we, when compared to extraterrestrial species whom have achieved interstellar travel, are only just stepping onto the first rungs of the evolutionary ladder of intelligence. The last century has shown just how quickly technology can change the evolutionary path of a species. The next 1000 years will see mankind becoming something we would find difficult to recognize today. If we could get a glance at our future, we would see the results from the advancements in gene editing, AI and the integration of technology into our bodies. These advanced technologies will change us as a species and it's a vision we are just coming to terms with. We must start considering the impacts on the future human beings. But I digress. Let's consider these changes we are seeing on our planet when we talk of alien civilizations. Any species that has a line of unbroken evolution with as little as say 5000 years difference would possess technological abilities so far beyond what we consider advanced they could achieve things we can barely imagine. Their superior technological ability would be beyond anything we can dream up, even in the biggest and best sci-fi spectacular. Ball explains his ideas by proposing the hypothetical situation of cross-species communication, saying, an argument based on relative timescales suggests that the appropriate primitive earth life, an animal such as a mollusk or trilobite compared with man. We imagine talking with mammals and birds but oysters? And yes, in the alien communication theory, we are the oysters. He goes on to say, the idea that we shall be welcomed as a member into the galactic community is as unlikely as the idea that oysters will be welcomed as a new member into the human community. And we're probably not even edible. Returning to the idea of a zoo planet, we may find out that we are not even on a level comparable to gorillas or bears or other aware animals. To aliens, we might be seen as nothing more than an ant farm. This, as Ball states, isn't the zoo hypothesis, but rather something called the ants in the jungle hypothesis. The ants in the jungle hypothesis would have us as unaware of extraterrestrial intelligence. This for the same reason that ants in a jungle may well be unaware of people. Extraterrestrial intelligence may be too far beyond our intellectual horizon. Some of the phenomena that we already see today may be associated with extraterrestrial intelligence, but we just don't understand it. 
This is where things may become a little scary, especially if you consider just how easy it is for us to eradicate a nest of ants. The late great Stephen Hawking thought that for this reason we should not broadcast our presence to the universe. This as a precaution against us making contact with an advanced alien civilization whom could easily conquer us if they so wished. So let's hope if we have been discovered by ET they choose to keep the earth as a zoo, maybe watching over us and studying our development. I would prefer life in a fishbowl to the alternative extinction of our species, maybe making way for a new alien theme park or tourist attraction. This is just a hypothesis, it has its flaws. For one, if we are an intergalactic tourist attraction why do we not see those coming to view our exhibit? Well maybe we do, that could provide an explanation for the many UFO sightings. What do you think? Are intelligent extraterrestrial life forms out there and is the earth a zoo? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching, see you next time.